our next project is going to be on abstract art and we'll use our knowledge of the elements art to create a collage. Let's start with what is abstract art? You might be thinking abstract art looks funny. You know, abstract art is just a bunch of squiggles and shapes. You might be saying abstract art is art that doesn't look real. And you're all, all those answers are kind of right. Abstract art is artwork that's not meant to show its subject realistically. So some abstract art is just a solid color on a canvas or paint splash. But abstract art can also be artwork where you look at it and you say, well, that looks like a cow, but the cow is made up of just triangles. So both of these are abstract art. And there are two types of abstract art, representational and non-representational. Representational art are images that are recognizable as what they're meant to be, but they don't have to be realistic. So it might reference an object or a person or event from the real world, but it has been highly stylized. So like the example I just used of, it looks like a cow, but it's made up of triangles. That would be a example of representational abstract art. Non-representational abstract art are images that have no clear identity and they need to be interpreted by the viewer of the artwork. So they rely on line, form, and color, all elements of art, to get a response from the viewer. So non-representational art is art that's not meant to look like something specific. Represent representational artwork can still have abstract elements in it. All right, so sometimes those lines get a little blurred. Now, I'm going to show a series of artworks and I want you to decide whether they are representational or non-representational. I'll pause and let you think for this artwork. This artwork is called Woman with a Guitar. It's an example of a representational artwork. We can see here there is a woman's face and she has some hair. And then down here we can see the guitar. Now decide if this artwork is representational or non-representational. This artwork is called Convergence. It's by Jackson Pollock. And this is an example of non-representational art. So this artwork was created by throwing and splattering paint across a massive canvas. Uh, Pollock was not trying to create any particular shapes and it, he wasn't trying to get you to see something specific. Instead, he wants you to feel an emotion based on the motion of the paint and the colors he used. Now, is this artwork representational or non-representational? This artwork is called Delicate Tension number 85. It is by the artist Vasily Kandinsky and it is non-representational. So some people do see images in this artwork. I've heard that people see a sword or a bird or a fish. However, because everyone sees different things in this artwork, Kandinsky wasn't trying to get everyone to see that one thing. 
Instead, our brains are just trying to make sense of what they are seeing. Now, is this artwork representational or non-representational? This artwork is called Brick Factory at Tortosa, and it is by the artist Pablo Picasso. This artwork is representational. In this artwork, you can probably see buildings and trees, and we may not know exactly what the building is supposed to be, but we all see it. We can even see, based on the title, that this uh, figure here is probably the smokestack of the factory. Now we're going to put the spotlight on the artist Norman Lewis. Norman Lewis was an abstract expressionist, which is a genre of art. So you might have heard of pop art before or Renaissance art. Abstract expressionism is just another particular style of art. He was from Harlem and he painted from the 1940s to his death in 1979. His work really walks the line between representational and non-representational artwork. So viewers often need to know the title of his work in order to be able to see the subject of his work. His artwork often showed, the, uh, showed Black urban life in his neighborhood in Harlem, and he showed the struggles of his community. So take a moment and look at this artwork and figure out if you can see anything in it. This artwork is called The Tenement. Now, a tenement is like a really big apartment building. It has lots of floors for lots of apartments. So I want you to picture you're walking around at nighttime and you walk past a big apartment building. You know, there are lights on in some of the windows. Some of the people have different colored curtains. There are people watching TV and the light from the TV is coming through the windows. Does that image in your head look like this? This image is showing different windows in the apartment building, in the tenement building. Take a moment and see what you can pick out of this artwork. This artwork is called a jazz club. Now, I know jazz clubs aren't all that popular anymore, but back in the day, they were a place where you would go and hear live music and there would be dancing. And the thing about jazz is that it's very spontaneous. Often jazz musicians would be writing the music as they were playing it. It was often kind of loud and chaotic, and there would be lots of people just having a great time dancing. You might see some of that in this artwork. We have all of these bright, vibrant colors uh, for the loudness. There's lots of energetic lines going on. And you might even get the sense of some figures dancing. You might, if you look closely, see some feet or hands, or even a body dancing to the music. Take a moment and figure out what you can see in this artwork. This painting is called March on Washington, and it was painted in 1965. Now, you might know that during the 1960s, that was the height of the civil rights movement. 
where African Americans were fighting for equal rights, um, and they would often uh, perform in protests, such as a march on Washington, D.C. So if you look at this image, we can see a crowd of people, and they seem to be walking across the canvas. They're all facing the same way, marching in one direction. And what's amazing about this artwork is there's not a single like recognizable face or body really happening here if, when we really look at it. But the way he's put together all of these shapes gives us this sense of a crowd of people. And I just think that's incredible. Take a moment and see if you can visualize anything in this artwork. This artwork is called Roller Coaster. So this painting is more on the non-representational side. I don't think we're supposed to see a physical roller coaster in this painting. However, we can kind of make out tracks of the roller coaster and we can see the different loops of the tracks as it swiggles around. And I think overall it does kind of evoke the memory of riding a roller coaster through its, you know, chaotic twists and turns. Now, take a second, see if you can see any images in this painting. This painting is called Fantasy 2, and I think this is one of the most non-representational of Norman Lewis's work. Um, so a fantasy is it's like a, de a dream or a daydream or something that takes place in your imagination. It's not necessarily something that's true to life. So in a fantasy, we can have, you know, dragons or we can have, you know, your, a, a dream where your teacher has lobster claws instead of hands because anything can happen. So I think, and this is my personal opinion, that Norman Lewis put in just enough shapes and symbols that our brain is going to fill in the rest of the information. So he wasn't trying to get us to see something specific, but rather giving us room and the tools for us to imagine whatever we want in this artwork. This is the last painting. Take a moment and look at it to see if you can find any imagery. This painting is called The Players. So people disagree with me on this, and so it's fine if you don't see what I see. But when I look at this painting, I see three people playing musical instruments. All right, so I see here, I visualize like um, a saxophone player. In this one, I see a bass. And in this figure, I see them playing the drums. So you don't have to agree with me. A lot of people say that they see like animals in this painting. And the thing about this artwork is that I can't find any more specific information on it. I can't even find the year it was painted. And believe me, I have looked. So in this painting, it's really up to us to decide what it means. So I have my idea. 
you can have your idea and that's okay if they don't agree. For this project, you will be creating a piece of abstract art using collage and selecting two elements of art to focus on. So collage, in case you don't know, is a type of artwork where you take pieces of paper, they can be from magazine, they can be construction paper, advertisements, you know, when you're cut up homework, and they all get glued together to form a new image. If you're not sure what element to use, I have this link here that will take you to a wheel that you can click to spin and it will give you an element. Your first step is going to be to create five thumbnail sketches of potential compositions, and then you will pick one to create as a nine by 12 artwork. You can create an artwork that looks however you want any composition, but it does have to be abstract. So as much as I love seeing your pets, I do not want a picture of your pet for this artwork. You can collage with whatever materials you have available. I understand that if you're at home, you don't necessarily have you know, everything that we have in the art room. So start you know, taking your junk mail, going through it, finding those advertisements for you know, insurance companies that your parents are just gonna throw out and use them. To help you create an interesting composition, Continue to the next slide to learn about the five guidelines for strong composition. These guidelines are here to help you make a more interesting looking artwork. They're useful for any artwork you make, not just for this project. I'm going to walk us through each of the five guidelines. First is asymmetry. Asymmetry means that it is not the same on both sides of a central line in the artwork. So here we have Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. We can cut the painting in half. We see on one side we have this tree or mountain, and on the other side we have the moon and there's no tree or mountain. These images are different on either side of the canvas. Whereas in this painting, when we split it down the middle, both sides of the painting are pretty similar. There are some small differences. For example, there is a tree on this side, but not on this side. But overall, we'd call them too similar for it to be asymmetry. The next guideline is diagonals. A diagonal line is a line set at an angle. So in this painting here, we have these diagonal lines in the artwork, but diagonal lines can also be implied, which means that even though there's not a line, uh, like a physical line, there are objects that line up in a way that pull our eye along with them. So in this photograph, we have footprints and our eyes will follow the footprints in that diagonal line. That is called implied line. Next is cropping. Cropping is when elements in an artwork are cut off at the edge of the composition. So here we have two delicious looking plates of cookies. This uh, photograph, you know, looks very yummy. But this photograph is much more interesting to look at because the plate and the cookies have been cut off at the edge of the page. The napkin is cut off. Even that mug of milk is cut off at the edge. All right, there's a lot more to engage our eye through these cropped elements. Next up for our guideline is little negative space. So space is something we talked about in the elements of art. Positive space is where things are. So the things that take up space in the artwork. And negative space is any space that is empty. There's nothing going on. 
So this painting is an example of little negative space because this artwork is full. You know, there are colors in the water. There are people on the ground. There are trees. There are clouds in the sky. There are things in every part of this artwork. Whereas in this artwork, you know, that's a delicious looking fried egg. But there is so much negative space. There is nothing going on in most of the artwork. So we want to have the artwork as full as we can get it. The last element is called overlapping. And that is simply where you place objects in front of other objects to give the illusion of depth. So we can see in these artworks, we have you know, hands in front of bottles. We have all of these interesting looking geometric forms that go over each other to create the illusion of space and depth. So these guidelines are there to help you as you start creating your abstract composition. Now I have some examples to show you of some abstract artworks. The so take a look, see what elements of art you can identify, and then I'll talk about some. So one thing I think these artworks all have in common is that they have a strong use of color. And I'm also seeing a lot of shape. For example, these black shapes, this triangle. This artwork also uses a lot of line. And in this artwork, I am seeing a lot of texture. Now take a moment and see what elements you can find in these artworks. So in this artwork here, I see a lot of texture and I also see a lot of space created through overlapping. In this artwork, I see a lot of shape and a lot of line. So these are just a few examples of the literally infinite possibilities you have for creating your abstract artwork. If you need more inspiration, please talk to me. I can give you so many more resources, but this is something to get you going as you start planning your artwork through your thumbnails.